see within our own faith's eye that Mary in her compassion, hugging Peter, forgiving him for what he did to her son, was Mary following her own advice to the waiters. Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he himself would do. My sisters and brothers, in so many ways, as you and I think about this great feast, and especially about it, what it means to our dear Polish people, we think about the countless times in the history of our ancestors when our people turned to Mary and Mary would not turn her back on them. So many times over the course of the centuries when the enemies of the Polish people wanted to annihilate them, the Poles turned to Our Lady and she warded off all of the enemies. And no wonder that as the story tells us, that God's will himself was observed at that image of our dear blessed lady is enshrined in that Yasnagora, the shrine on top of the hill. Over the course of the last five years, it has in fact been my privilege to go to that great church, to be in long lines of people who come to cast our eyes upon the image of our dear blessed lady. And twice in the course of the last five years, it's been an awesome privilege for me to be able to celebrate the Holy Mass at the very altar where Our Lady is enshrined. So many memories I have of both of those visits. Lining behind the altar, seeing the letters, notes of thank yous to Our Lady for ways in which she has helped others, coming to the foot of that altar, watching as the triumphant uncovering of the image of our Mary called people to a greater understanding of the beauty of the mother of Jesus. But of all the images that I have and all the experiences that are mine as a result of those visits, one image is most vivid standing facing the altar of the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa to the left is in fact the blood-stained sash worn by blessed John Paul II on May 13th, 1981, when an assass assassin attempted to end his life. And how appropriate that our Holy Father who survived that assassin's attack would in fact give that sash and have it placed near the image of our dear Mother Mary as a prayer and act of gratitude for the way in which she protected him. And what a reminder, such a vivid reminder, that image is to all of us as you and I likewise face the struggles of our own life. Whenever Mary protected those married people, newly married people in our gospel, whenever Mary protected our ancestors in the faith in our native Poland, whenever Mary protected our dear John Paul II, it is a reminder that her protection for us is not an end in itself, but is meant as an incentive that we likewise go and do whatever he tells us. And so tonight, in the beautiful ritual of this moment, as we come to remember both history and to be immersed in faith, we thank God for the gift of Our Lady, and especially in the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa. And remembering all that our dear Mary has done for others in the past, certainly for those wedding guests in Cana of Galilee, certainly for Peter, certainly for the people of Poland, and clearly for John Paul II, we experience Mary's protection as well so that we may always and forever be strengthened 
to do whatever Jesus tells us. In response to the power of God's word spoken to us and meant to live within us, we together now stand as we proudly profess our faith. I believe. To our God who has given to us the gift of his own son's mother, we lift up our prayers, begging God for his protection in times of evil and distress and expressing to him the need for the strength of his unending grace. For Pope Benedict XVI, Bishop David Zubik, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may continue to celebrate the liturgy reverently, so all may enter more deeply into the sacred mysteries of our holy faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Za naszą ukochaną ojczyznę, aby za wstawiennictwem Maryi Królowej Polski podążała drogą rozwoju duchowego i materialnego. Ciebie prosimy. For all governments that they may enact laws which will bring justice a treatment to all, especially the preborn, the unemployed and aging citizens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our za Polonię Amerykańską i wszystkich Polaków rozproszonych po świecie, aby pielęgnowali polskość w swoich rodzinach, strzegli wiary i tradycji ojców, aby w ich życiu urzeczywistniło się Królestwo Boże. Ciebie prosimy. That like Mary, our heavenly and loving mother, we may, we may be again, we may be open to God's plan in our daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Za nasze zgromadzenie liturgiczne, abyśmy jako uczniowie Pana postępowali zgodnie z Jego nauką i na wzór Maryi zawsze wypełniali Jego wolę. Ciebie prosimy. For our departed loved ones, especially those who gave their lives for the freedom of Poland and of our nation, that they enjoy the reward of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer and help us that we may always seek 
to do whatever Jesus tells us. We lift up our prayer to you with the help of our dear Blessed Lady, that as she continues to protect us under the mantle of her garment, may we like her, all we seek to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We offer this prayer in his name. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we are offering these sacrificial gifts to you for the triumph of the Christian religion. May they be beneficial to us through the sure help of the Virgin Mary, help of Christians, which once brought about a great victory. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of Our Lady of Chehenstahova. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Benedict, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, with William, our auxiliary bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 